going on everyone welcome back to my name is so this morning for our pre-workout fuel we got three eggs and then we have half of a bun I didn't have any more sourdough, but since like the calories are equivalent to half of a bun, I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna have half of a bun then since I can't have my sourdough. And then we got an apple and protein shake by Transfer Labs. This was featured in the last full day of eating, so nothing has changed yet. When I do a full day of eating next time, this will have changed. Um, I'm not exactly too sure what I'm gonna change. I really like the eggs and the sourdough, so I might keep that. So maybe this won't change, I don't know. Cause like this is basically the whole breakfast and this is just an addition to the breakfast and so is the protein shake. And I feel like I need the protein shake for the extra protein in the morning. I don't know, maybe we'll do like a breakfast burrito instead, but I love sourdough. Yeah, this is for our pre-workout. So I'm working out with a buddy today who I met in 2021, 2021, 2022, kind of like on the brink of that. So we're gonna meet up there at the gym today. We're gonna be doing a little bit of shoulders and we're gonna be doing some back as well. Yeah, that's my fuel for this. And I try to have it like an hour to two hours before my workout, just because you wanna let your food digest because if your food is still sitting in your stomach when you're working out, it's trying to be metabolized by your stomach, which means blood is in that area and being concentrated in there. And you don't want that. You want the blood flowing in and out through the muscle area so that it can transport oxygen, ATP better to your muscles rather than your stomach during your workout. Just something to keep note of when you are working out and you do have a pre-workout meal. Stim free pre for the win today. You guys know, or some of you guys know, I am currently doing no caffeine for Lent. It started out as no coffee, but I'm like, bro, the real reason that I'm not drinking coffee is because I don't want the caffeine. Like, if I wasn't gonna drink coffee, I'd just have like, you know, pre-workout with caffeine in the morning or something like that to offset the withdrawals and all that. So, doing no caffeine for Lent. So, we still got 22 days, which is rough but we're gonna make it, you know, we're gonna be fine. It is weird though that like coffee is so tempting to me right now, even though like I'm the only addictive property that it has is caffeine. So like, I don't know why the temptation's so high. If I were to have one guess, it's the enemy, but we do have this stim free for pre-workout when I can't have caffeine or like, I just don't feel like having it. If I transfer it labs, it has everything else that like normal pre-workout has in it. It literally just doesn't have the caffeine so if you guys are interested in picking something up maybe you're like super sensitive to caffeine i am actually someone who's super sensitive to caffeine um, but if you are maybe consider picking this up code levi will save you 10 percent off the flavor i'm having this morning is the peach mango flavor i really like that one and then the watermelon's really great too so we did have to work out like a little later i can't remember if i had said that earlier or not we're working out at 8 a.m this morning normally i train at 6:45 but we're training at eight since my buddy, I don't know. I don't know if he didn't want to get up that early or what, um, but yeah, so we're just working on his time just before he leaves. So that's what we're doing. Normally, again, I work out 6.45. Dang, look at this guy. Look at this Okay, what the heck? Dang. There's He's back in the YouTube videos. It's yeah. been a while. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, I, I thought you were like saying your thing, and then I was like, that's what, exactly what I say when I'm like, oh, he's back in the YouTube videos. I know, I was saying that. It's been a while. We haven't seen Rory in the videos. What have you been up to, Rory? I say uh, that every time. I'm busy. Yeah, Rory. Yeah, you know, Rory. He's that busy guy. <laughs>
these GHC sit-ups with a Roman twist at the end with these three plates like that. Kills. Eventually. Alright, monthly supplement stack is in. So this month, I didn't order like too much. I really didn't need anything excess. Like I have a lot of pre-workout that I haven't used because of no caffeine due to Lent and all that. So I really just got hydrate, creatine, protein bars, and protein. And we also got some krill oil and we got some joint support as well. So yeah, this is everything that, th this is like my go to or in other words my staples like everything that you see right here is a staple in what i have in other words the whey the electrolytes which is the hydrate creatine and these two vitamins right here protein bars not so much because i can just go to the store and buy like you guys know this if you guys have been watching the channel for a while i like the what are they called i can't oh the rx bars like the no bs bars because they're the only other bar besides this bar right here that has like natural ingredients and no added bull crap that I don't want to digest that I'm not gonna say it's gonna give me cancer but like what maybe it is who knows probably won't but you know we're about to go for our run here in just a little bit so I usually go for my run at about 3 30 4 o'clock again that gives me about that six hour time frame that I'm kind of looking to get before I go on to my next workout Granted, it doesn't have to be exactly six hours. I understand like some people have work complications and everything. I think even giving yourself like four or five hours in between is still fine, but I just do it to maximize the amount of energy that I can refuel up on for my body because it allows me to get in, I believe, is that like what, three more meals in before my run. Granted, I have five meals a day. So for a lot of you guys, it probably will only be like two because some of you guys probably do like four meals a day and your fourth meal is probably a snack. And that's exactly actually what I'm about to have. I'm just gonna have a protein bar, which is one of these bars right here. And then we're also gonna have a piece of fruit, which is probably gonna be an orange. I actually do not like having oranges that much just because like, dude, these things are not easy to peel. Like, you know, like a cutie orange or one of those like big sumo oranges. Those are easy to peel, but these are not. So yeah, I'm gonna eat this and then I'm gonna give myself about an hour to digest this. I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I like to digest or have food an hour to two hours before I'm about to do my workout so that my blood is focused on helping support my body during the workout rather than being in my stomach to help break down the food. Orange and a protein bar before the run. Just don't want it to be too heavy because the heavier something is, the longer it's just gonna to take to digest and the longer I'm gonna to have to wait to go to work out. And I don't have all the time in the world just like you guys. These are like the worst kind of days in Washington. Right now to you might look nice out, you know, like nice. But in reality, there's like a piece of blue sky right here. And then all around is just like super dark clouds. And the sun is just like peering through. I call them the worst days ever because it's kind of like a tease. You get like some sunshine, but then you know you don't really have like sunshine. You just have like crappy weather just waiting to hit you any minute. And the sunshine is like a tease. Like I'm standing in it right now. And if there was like none of this crap around us and no heavy wind, it's actually very windy today. The wind's just still sitting a little higher. It would be like a nice 70 degree, beautiful day, but nope. This is, this is, this is Washington. We got March through April and those months are just, they're just horrendous for like weather, you know, and it sucks, especially like running in this weather, just horrible. Like I'd rather run on like a 20 degree sunny day than a whatever you call this. But hey, we're gonna stop the complaining. We're gonna do five miles today. We're gonna do a zone two run. I don't wanna go too hard simply because my hip, I can't remember if I said this in the video or not, but my right hip is giving me some issues. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. Just five miles easy, 930 minute per mile pace. And we're not gonna be pushing it too much. So I'm gonna get out here and get this thing done.
All right, we're doing our cool down now. Five minutes, moving at a nine minute and 16 minute per mile pace. So one thing I wanna preface is that every single run you do does not have to be at like a Usain Bolt speed. Every single time you run, you shouldn't be trying to always hit a new PR or you shouldn't even be running at your typical jog pace because your typical jog pace is probably faster than a zone two pace. And that's what I'm trying to talk about right now essentially is if you're new to running, maybe you've been thinking about running or maybe you're seeing this video now and you're thinking, huh, maybe I should get into running. You should really consider throwing it, not even consider, you should be doing zone two training. And zone two training looks like going for a run at a pace in which you can hold a conversation. So if I go for a five mile run, I should be able to go at a pace that I can talk to someone with for the entire time. And for me, that pace is about a nine minute per mile pace all the way up to a 10 minute per mile pace. Some days it's different depending on how I'm feeling, but it usually ranges in between there. But for some of you guys, it might be like 10 minutes and 30 seconds you know minutes per mile pace especially if you're just starting out but you need to include some runs like that because zone two training gets your body adapted or your mitochondria i should say adapted to burning energy more efficiently which helps you in the long run with getting faster and building your endurance i should make a video and i probably will make a video on building your endurance later on at a different time and place in the future but definitely if you're someone that's getting into running or you already run or, you know, again, you see this video and think about running, you need to incorporate it. It's the number one thing that's helped me build my endurance. One big mistake that I see a lot of people make when it comes to their training is that they try to separate their recovery from their training. Like they treat recovery as its own little entity in its own little box when in reality it needs to be a part of your training and you need to make that psychological switch because at least for me, I don't know if this goes for you guys, but whenever I treat recovery as its own separate entity, I don't take it as serious. And one day it occurred to me that the only reason I'm able to train and continue to train for a long period of time is because I recovered. So I was like, I need to make it a part of my training so that I treat it just as important as the actual lifting and running aspect. So every single day I dedicate 20 to 30 minutes of stretching and rolling out. And it has helped me so much, literally so much with my mobility, just pains that I used to have, like it really, really freaking helps. And so if you're not already doing that already, or you're trying to get into the habit of running, or you're trying to get into the habit of lifting, also, please, please, for the love of God, include this. Cause when I was younger, I didn't think of recovery as something you know serious. And I've said this in so many videos, that I wish I would have started doing recovery stuff when I was younger because it all came to bite me in the butt when I was around like 22, 23 years old. And I don't want that to happen to you guys because I was lucky enough to not experience like an insane injury. Granted, like my lower back hip area, you know, is pretty inflamed a lot of the time, but it can be a lot worse for people out there if they don't do that. So I'm just prefacing that because that's something that y'all need to do and you guys will be so happy that you started doing it early on especially if you're younger watching this video but yeah that's that's pretty much gonna do it for this video that's like my full day of training that's everything that i do i do want to mention that some other things that you guys can do to help through your training which is again part of my recovery that's also part of my training is that i do the sauna about two to three times a week it's something that has been noted to really help you with your recovery and I would say that it has definitely helped with mine. And so I, I really enjoy doing it. I understand not everyone has access to a sauna, but if you do, do it. I don't really do cold plunges as much. I will do like cold baths for my legs when I start getting into like 10 to 20 mile runs, but I haven't done those in so long. So I, I just haven't done that. So yeah, that's it. That's a whole day of training for y'all. Um, it was a good day. I'm a little sore, I'm not gonna lie. But that is gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys liked today's video. If you guys did, be sure to give it a like. If any of you guys are new here, do not forget to press that subscribe button because you guys know I will be back. Also, if you guys wanna support the clothing brand, Kill Built, there will be a link down below for that. Any support is appreciated. Even if you buy something as simple as a beanie. And as always, if you guys trying to do to love, the sky's the limit. I'll see you all in the next one.